aka Jill John. Coming in with another video. Oh, oh, oh. Just checking in with everyone before I go to bed. I'm not in the best of moods, and but I haven't spoke to y'all in a minute, so I decided why not go live, give y'all a little update on everything, what's going on, how's everybody doing, look at my belly, I'm getting fat y'all, you better cover that up, cause no. <laughs> um so um I don't guess I don't have nothing really to talk about but I am in Georgia after getting a load to from Florida to South Carolina <laughs> you saw that, Gary. <laughs> um, I was doing good. And then I came to this dang on truck stop. <laughs> Nigel, stop. And they had some Fuddruckers that I'd never had before. So I had to try it. And yeah. But y'all, I'm like frustrated, bro. I want to go home. I want to get off the truck. I want to go home. I'm done with this. I'm tired of sitting. I'm tired of the up and down with the miles. Like, this company is just, I don't know what's happening. But, I'm just, I want to go home. Hold on, let me make sure. Okay. Leave the dog alone. I, I want to go home because, like, last week, remember the last time I went live, right? I had a beautiful check. They said that if I go home every two weeks, I should have better miles because they give people the big miles to go home. So that means probably one week out of the two weeks, I'm going to have low miles. That means it's going to go up and down. And... So this week, this pay period is I'm going to go get like 1,200 miles. And I had made a promise to my car note, to my leasing company for the car that I would make a payment today. Luckily, my daughter got paid, so she was able to give me part of it. But I'm trying to make sure my car doesn't get repossessed. I'm trying to make sure I can stay on top of my mortgage payments. Like, mortgage is first and foremost. That's always going to be number one. Then the car note. But I still got the car insurance. And I still got the power bill. And, and, and these miles are so up and down. I just... It's stressing me out. I can't do it. I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to have faith. I'm trying to have faith in God. I'm trying to pray and read my Bible and be positive. And it's so hard. It's so hard. Because I'm thinking about like next week. And then that too, the Baltimore stuff, I'm already knowing. I don't even want to think about that. So, the job that I applied for, I, um, they gave me, they gave me all these assessments, right? So, the first assessment was, I had to do, um, a logical test, which is almost like taking LSAT. I didn't know that that's what I was doing until I was in the middle of the test. And I did well. They actually, like, they actually... They gave me another assessment. 
the TV is gonna keep going in and out because every time a truck passes my car, my truck, the signal goes out on the TV. So it does this. It pisses me off when I'm watching TV. Anywho, um, so then I passed that. They gave me a second assessment. The second assessment is like doing a dispatching test for like, for like um, first responders. I did that. I passed it. The third test they sent me was the hardest test of my whole entire life. Y'all, this test was so hard. Oh my God. So I had to do, and I couldn't ask for no help because then I would be cheating. So I had to do Microsoft Excel. I had to analyze some data. They gave me a data set. I had to analyze the data. And then I had to create a pivot table. And then I had to, you know, explain the data. And then I had to do a writing sample. I did the writing sample. Writing sample was easy. But that pivot test, the Microsoft Excel, I know nothing about Microsoft Excel. So you know what I was doing all week? I was teaching myself how to analyze data on Microsoft Excel because I had a deadline to turn this to turn this um, test in. It was so hard. Oh my God. It was so hard. First of all, analyzing anything is hard for me because I have a learning disability. So I need people to explain stuff to me in like layman's terms, like a fifth grader, right? And so I learned how to clean the data. I learned how to organize the data. I learned how to do the pivot tables, but then I had to analyze it, which means I got to answer a question and I got to look at the data and actually answer the question. That was challenging for me because of my learning disability. So hard, y'all. It was so hard. So hard. And then I gave up like five, 20 times. <laughs> I gave up. I kept giving up. But then I kept saying to myself, you want it as bad as you want to breathe. You want to get off this truck? You want to do this? You got faith in God? You walk, if you really believe in God like you say you do, if you really want this like you say you do, if you trust in him like you say you do, then you need to keep going. You can't quit. And I, I kept going. I didn't quit. And I turned it in. And y'all, they called me back. They said they received the information. They received the test. And that um, they'll be contacting me for an interview. And I was like, oh my God. The two out of the three tests, I had no clue how to do, like at all. And so hopefully they hit me up for this interview next week. Now, the other job that I applied for, I'm still trying to do the typing test, but I didn't got these nails. I gotta get them cut because I can't learn typing. I can't learn typing with these nails. Um, so that's my fallback. But right now I'm feeling so emotional to where I feel like when I go back home again, I want to clean this truck out and really just be done with it. I want to clean it out and be done. But you know what? I can't. You want to know why? Because I didn't even have the money to get my car registered. I didn't have the money to get the car insurance. So it's not like I could quit and then do Uber or something because my car is not registered. They ain't gonna let me. So I gotta stick with it. I don't know how this Baltimore stuff is gonna affect the industry. That's a big ass cruise ship, a big old ship. They had a lot, but but they said that's the largest port for like auto haulers and stuff like that. So, like a lot of stuff that come out of that port are is not, from what I've read, it's not stuff that, it's not like commodities and stuff like that that we're dealing with. So hopefully, that doesn't affect dry vans too much. It's nothing popping off like it's it's March April, so it's not like it's a holiday, no food. I mean, 4th of July, but I want to go home so bad. Like, so Beyonce just came out with her new album, right? Uh, how they go get the stuff off that ship? Did they move the ship already? 
but I was listening to Beyonce's new album and I was like listening to it and I don't know why but it made me want to be in Houston I want to go home <laughs> I want to go home so bad I want to go home so bad so then at home right when he left he left stuff undone like he was supposed to he's so petty bro do y'all know what he did so he installed a ceiling fan that has a remote a remote um to turn it on and off right why he fucking take the remote i can't turn my ceiling fan on i can't turn my light on i can't turn none of that up there on it's the only thing i can use for a light in my house in my room are my, my um, nightstand lights so now i gotta try to find a remote but i don't even think that's gonna work because i gotta program it but i can't turn it on to program it so that means i gotta uninstall the ceiling fan and put in a regular light which is stupid he's so fucking petty like why would you take the fucking remote then he didn't change the faucet the faucet is leaking and i learned that it could be like a little seal that's leaking or it could be the faucet needs to be replaced i don't know but i gotta do that so i tried no i didn't try that yet the dishwasher is not draining right so i tried to figure out why the dishwasher not draining i did everything figured out why it's not draining fixed it but now the dishwasher won't turn on and then because the dishwasher not draining. Do y'all know I had to like take out the garbage disposal and I had to take all the plugs out the dishwasher and I put dye inside the, the um, tubes so I could see the water go through the tubes because I didn't even know if it was plugged up or stopped up or not. And then I was thinking, I'm a whole entire homeowner and I don't have a man. And I know nothing about being a homeowner. I know nothing about handyman stuff. I don't have the money to hire a handyman. How am I going to take care of this house? Then the sink, the little thing. So you got the sink that I have, the, the spout, and then the nozzle is on the spout. I don't got like the two handles. But it's leaking at the nozzle. And I think it's the hot water. So I can't get under there to see because the sink is in the way. And... The thing is behind the sink and I can't see in there I don't know how so what am I supposed to do take the sink out to try to see what's going on with the nozzle and then the whole the whole um backyard and front yard like my backyard looked like the woods because it was the woods before I moved in that house so now I gotta get like a lawnmower. And and Ernest, I can't believe y'all, Ernest don't do shit. Excuse my language. He don't do nothing, right? While my son got up one day and borrowed the new next door neighbor's um um He went to the neighbors and got their lawnmower and mowed the backyard. Did nobody ask him to do it? He just did it. I was like, oh my god. He did that. And then um, somebody get this person. Um, I was I was so like, oh my gosh. I can't believe he did that without me asking him. And I need my moderators. <sighs> yeah, so but that makes me want to go home. It makes me want to go home because I want to go home and I want to mow the lawn. And I want to do like the little stuff around the house. Like I want to be the homeowner doing all that stuff. I don't know how to put another ceiling fan in. I don't know how to do none of that. <laughs> like my doorbell don't work. My doorbell don't work. My dishwasher won't come on. And the sink is... I don't know how to do none of that stuff. I can pretty much do anything, right? I can fix it up. I could do anything. But when it comes to electrical stuff, I don't want to fuck with it. Like, that's a lot of learning that I, I don't have the time to learn because I'm trying to learn how to do a typing test so I can get a better job. <sighs> but anywho, I want to go home. I got to, like, redo my front yard, like, the um, landscaping. 
it's not a, it was only a one year warranty and then i i registered my appliances under warranty but i don't remember i can't i looked it up and it, it, they can't find my account and i'm just like i don't remember like how do people do this how do people do this stuff owning a home and doing all this stuff and the house that i bought they was building so fast and they was just doing things so weird um i have a, a video doorbell so i don't know i'm i'm assuming that things are going to be breaking because i feel like it was low budget low quality stuff that they put in this house I do YouTube. I've been doing YouTube, but when it comes to electrical stuff, I can't do it. And when it comes to that sink, that 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 faucet, I can't even reach to see how they do that. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know what to look at first. So I'm frustrated, but all of this stuff is on my mind, and I just I just need more miles because I could buy a new dishwasher. But then maybe I just need to do it. First, I'll probably need to check the power supply. Maybe maybe it, the breaker flipped or um, not flipped, but maybe the breaker um, tripped because the dishwasher was running. And then when I switched it, when I looked for everything, just the pipes and then I plugged everything back up, it's not running no more. I didn't unplug anything like I didn't mess with anything the electrical was all the pipes to see if there was anything clogged but when I was pulling the dishwasher out of the little hole I hadn't unplugged it first so maybe I broke the, the power supply so if I have to replace it because they do have a replacement power supply how do I install the power supply I don't know how to install I don't know how to install a power supply on a dishwasher. I was thinking, I was about to just call him and say, hey, can you come and fix the stuff that you said you was gonna fix? No money included. You don't even need to send me no money. You just fix the shit. But I was like, nah, my pride won't even let me do that. It won't even let me call him. I had a dream about him. I'm on good terms with some neighbors, yeah. I was thinking about that, Ronnie, getting a voltage detector. I'm gonna definitely need that owning the house, for sure. There's a lot of stuff I gotta check. Like, I've done DIY videos to change stuff before. That's how I was able to do the, the dishwasher, but there ain't no DIY videos of why the dishwasher ain't coming back on. But when I looked on Whirlpool's website and all the replacement parts for my dishwasher model, um, it gave me some ideas of like maybe maybe I don't have to get a whole new, whole new dishwasher maybe I just need the power supply um, maybe the breaker switched the breaker trip so I gotta check that when I get back home um, if not then I'm gonna check the power supply because that's only $17 versus buying a whole new dishwasher and if that don't work then I'll buy a whole new dishwasher and um my neighbors so my next door neighbor on on my right side they were best friends with my ex like her husband was best friends with my ex but the wife i don't know she be funny sometimes i don't know if she thinks i'm a threat but she be acting funny sometimes so i don't know the neighbor on the right maria she cool as fuck her husband is scary as shit to me though. I'm scared of that man. <laughs> he scares me. I don't wanna ask him for nothing. He's scary, he's so intimidating, it's ridiculous. Like, he don't even have a nice look on his face. He just looks mean. And he's a big man, he's big, like, good. So, um, yeah, my ex, I am no longer engaged.
so but that's the whole thing right like that just makes me want to go home and learn these things and and take my time i can't do everything in one weekend okay so excluding church sunday i really only have saturday to do everything that means i got saturday to spend time with my boys go see my girls cook dinner and sleep and clean wash like clothes and stuff they they came with it and they swapped out appliances because i was supposed to have the two door the opens like this instead i got the top and bottom and i'm like the the um, appliance paperwork that i have in my house that came with the house is not for the refrigerator that i have it's for the refrigerator i was supposed to have they swapped it out before i moved in but i have the whole i have the appliance package the dishwasher the stove and the microwave it's a package i believe angie's list that's what i, I couldn't remember i couldn't even think of the name of the place of the that's what i was looking for angie's list yeah so but i still gotta get the money to do it right now i don't have my check was like eight hundred dollars i have seven hundred and eighty dollars right now 600 of that well now i have 680 dollars and 80 of that i'm gonna eat with nope 580 got 580 because two of it i put towards a car note i'm supposed to save 650 for the car i mean for the mortgage so i'm short 200 dollars. 80 dollars is my budget to eat this week i spent 20 of that already so I don't have the money to pay anybody to do anything right now. Because my check was only fucking $800. It's ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. I can't stay on this truck like this. Right now while I'm sitting, because I'm sitting, I, I don't deliver this load till Monday morning. I could be at home right now driving Uber. I could be at home right now doing Amazon. I could be at home right now making money instead of sitting. Like, every time I'm sitting, I'm thinking about how much money I could be making at home right now. So, that's why I want to get off the truck. But I can't even, I can't even do that because I got to get the car registered. In order to get it registered, I got to get an inspection. <laughs> Lord forbid something wrong with the car I can't pass inspection. That's going to suck. I am in Georgia on my way to South Carolina and I still live in Texas yeah so yeah so I've been feeling kind of just down a little bit because I'm trying to be positive and it's all just finances at this point but let me show y'all something. I got a new Bible. Here's my Bible. Truck stop. I got it from Pilot. I did apply for them. Nobody caught me back. I don't want to drive trucks no more. I want to get off the truck. I don't. I'm. I'm not looking for no jobs. Trucking. Yep, it's King James version. It says, it says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. Proverbs 31, 25. Love this Bible. Because I have a digital Bible, but I just have to have a physical Bible. So, this is my physical Bible. Because I don't know why they got me sitting all weekend. That's why I need to get out of this truck. I'm looking for a hood shop to do the inspection under the table. Because I got two cars and need inspections. So, that's why I need to be home. While I've been sitting, this is what I've been doing. Been be dazzling my laptop case. <laughs> this time I'm like taking my time with it. So it'll be all pretty. And like, this is about to be hot. And I started to do my headset. I haven't, like, I just barely started it. 
because it's gonna be like light and it's gonna be like white and then light pink and then it's gonna go all the way to dark pink so up here is gonna be dark pink and then right here is gonna be dark pink so yeah but I was like let me isn't that pretty y'all looks so cute I was like, let me, I can't deliver early because it's Walmart and it's a live unload. <laughs> if it was Walmart, I would have took them up there early. Yes, definitely. But it's Walmart. Y'all know Walmart. Walmart don't play when it comes to stuff like that. I'm lucky to even gotten this load because the load before this sent me to Jacksonville, Florida and I was, it delivered on Friday. And I'm like, okay, so y'all about to have me in Jacksonville. And what happened? Oh. I'm like, y'all about to have me in Jacksonville. And then I'm about to be sitting for the weekend, right? So then they put me on another load that delivers. Um, they put me on another load that delivers on monday so you either way it go i have to sit over the weekend i was like and then my, i'm only gonna get 1200 miles this week and that's gonna get split because the load don't deliver until monday and i get i have to um the, the pay period ends on sunday and yeah i haven't done my taxes yet because i was about to do them and he said that i owe so i'm sitting here waiting to see if um biden or the house approves the bill for us to get the child tax credit of 2500 because now that my boys are 17 and 18 child tax credit is 500 and they didn't take a lot of, of taxes out of my check because of per diem so that means now i owe taxes if they change it to 2500 change it back to 2500 then i won't owe taxes so right now i owe the irs when i file taxes i'm going to owe them about 200 dollars which fucked me all the way up because I was not planning on that. Like, that's the last thing that I was hoping to get an income tax check. I'm not going to get one unless I can claim somebody as kids. Like, what? I got to change my exemptions. I guess I filed exempt. I don't even remember filing exempt. Because they still taking, like, my. I got my my check my net was like like 1200 or something and then take home was like eight something so they took like 300 something out of my check that's taxes and insurance so how am i filing how have i filed exempt but y'all still taking almost 200 dollars out of my check for taxes i don't get it but I owe the IRS, <laughs> or I will owe the IRS, so I'm actually have to do my taxes myself, and so I don't have to pay nobody. This is like the worst year ever. Thank you, Ronnie. I'm trying. I've been working on my skin because my skin has been kind of crazy. Um, get an extension. Mm. I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna do them when I go home this weekend, next weekend. That's gonna be a whole. I don't need an extension. Because if they do approve the bill, they're just going to give us a refund. I just can't believe I owe. Like, I ain't never in my life had to owe taxes. But, I mean, I have a home business and I should get that credit. So, I don't know. I have to see. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
This commercial is crazy. They keep coming on, and I like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what's been going on. I'm. I was so tired because they got me driving during the day. I'm used to driving at night. So I was late picking up this load that I'm currently on because I could not get out the bed for nothing. And they called me, it was like, why are you like two hours late? I said, cause I can't get up. I said, y'all keep putting me on these daytime loads and I drive at night. Like y'all don't understand. I keep telling y'all I need nighttime loads. Y'all want me to pick up at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. That's what time I go to bed. Like how, I literally go to bed between 7 a.m. and noon. So why y'all got me picking up between 7 a.m. and noon? That don't make sense. And then y'all gonna ask me why I'm late because I'm fucking sleepy. I'm tired. When I set my home time to come off a of home time, I set it to come off a of home time at um, 12.01 a.m. Monday morning. Y'all know what they did? They sent me a load for 1 p.m. What? And then I get the load, I go pick up a empty that was loaded. And then there was a whole traffic situation. I went, my load was supposed to pick up at 1 p.m. I didn't get there till 1 a.m. I left my house at 11 a.m. So that was crazy. And that load picked up in Texas and delivered in, where did it deliver to? forgot it. and then from there to um, Jacksonville I don't know what flavor this is oh I can tell you right now pink punch number one mixed with hard menthol I'm about to try to stop smoking. <laughs> Easier said than done. I learned that it's a habit. Like every time I sit in that driver's seat, I'm smoking. And every time I'm doing something really strenuous, this vapor stays in my hand. Like while I was trying to teach myself to do that Excel, this vape stayed in my hand. I didn't even realize I didn't have no juice in here. Um, so, also, I want to tell y'all, eventually I want to do this. I bought these little um, cards that I want to play with y'all. It's like a conversation starter. It's called Hardly in Love. Where are they at? Ugh. And I want us to have a conversation. Um, and I want us to do it live. And I want y'all to like tap in. And I want us to have like a panel. And I want us to have conversations. And, and just it's healthy conversation. Here we go. Right here. And um, I went to this event. And it was cool. And we, we had these cars. We were just talking and having conversations and stuff. And I thought that this would be a good game to play with y'all. So it says, unlock deep connections and spark romance with Hartley and Love dating cards. Delve into captivating conversations and uncover the secrets to true chemistry. Whether you're spicing up in a game night or adding intrigue to your date night, Hartley and Love is your passport to unforgettable moments and meaningful connections. But these cards don't necessarily have to be um, for, they don't necessarily have to be for dating, right? So like, for example, it says, What's the most underrated book, movie, or TV show you think everyone should know about? Um, if you could have dinner with any historical figure, what would it be? And what's the first question you'd ask? 
How much weight can your partner gain before you leave? What's your biggest turnoff? What's a hidden talent or skill you have that not many people talk about or know about? If you had to participate in the talent show tomorrow, what would you showcase? I think this would just be fun conversation to have. What's one thing on your bucket list you determine, you're determined to accomplish? I can answer that right now. What's one thing on my bucket list I'm determined to accomplish is walking across the seal that says Federal Bureau of Investigations in Quantico, Virginia. That's one of the things on my bucket list I am determined to accomplish. To go to Quantico, Virginia and go to Langley, Virginia, the FBI Academy, something like that. So, the Dirty D, you told me about that. I tried to start watching it, but I hadn't got into it. Oh my gosh, just like this little spot on my face it always itches, like right here. Like all the time. So, eventually I want to have this conversation, like I want to do these cards with y'all. So what's going to happen is, um, I'm going to go live on, on um, StreamYard. I'm going to put the link in. I'm going to need y'all couple of people to come in and we just going the question gonna be on the screen we just gonna have conversations and that's what I want to do so that'll come up soon I don't know when though but I, I bought these cards during the meet and greet that I went to this Sunday and we had conversations with um, a lot of people like married people and couples like we were we are at a table and the married couples were asking the questions because we were trying to get we were trying to get like tips and tricks from them on us being seen how we can navigate this dating life oh my god why does this itch I don't know where I'm at in Georgia. I think Georgia's South Carolina line or something. I don't know. I'm, um... trying to I'm trying to I, it's a habit I stop wearing eyelashes just so I can do this <laughs> knowing dang on well I'm not supposed to be touching my face the bucket list is turn the keys to my newly built home in Belize start my BNB business there you go girlfriend that's awesome be wanting to like rub my eyes and all kind of stuff i like us express but they're going through a hard time right now i bet you my face dirty my friend asked me today he said well, what would make it better right now for you driving for us express I said, if I had a teammate that just could just buckle down and take one for the team and let's just drive. Give me six weeks so I could just catch up. My face was dirty, God. Ooh. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. My face was dirty. He was like, so he said, well, our team, man. I'm not teaming with nobody no more. But that would make it my life so much easier right now. All right. I don't know how my face be getting so dirty. Like, what the heck? I haven't even been nowhere. I've just been inside the truck. Oh my 
my gosh, my face was dirty. It's like, that's the dirtiest part of my face, on my body. It's my face. It feels like. Y'all can't believe how dirty my I can't, I'm embarrassed to show y'all how dirty my face was. And I, I wash my face every day. I use this. It has um, witch hazel. It's witch hazel. That's what I clean my face with. And then I have a whole regimen that I'm about to do now because I haven't done it in a couple of days. I gotta find this other box stuff. I don't know what happened to it. I got like everything in that mama in this purse. I can't find my cream for my face. Like I use CeraVe, the ordinary, some more CeraVe, I'm trying to get my face back right, but I can't find one of the creams that I use, it's a night cream. Thank you, I'm trying to stay away from makeup. I want to look natural, so I'm trying not to do the makeup as much. Try not to do the lashes as much. I don't know where my cream is at. I have lost it. to my screen, my um. Ha! Hey, I forgot to tell y'all about that. So, I was walking Nigel, right? And she was doing the most. And I need to find that cream. Okay, so think. You know what she did? She knocked my wig off. In the middle, of, it was in front of the Pew Island. Woo! Yo, she knocked my wig off, but I got my locks on under here, so I got my locks under here. So I was—I just shook him out and and kept going. I—I I wasn't embarrassed. I would have been, but I wasn't embarrassed. I gotta find my cream though. This is. Hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid. That it was so funny. I know people was looking, but I was like, shoot, they must not know me. I picked the wig up. Well, I, I, I grabbed it before it came off, and then I took it off and shook my dress out and put it in my pocket. <laughs> I know people was like tripping, but shoot, they must not know me because I'm quick to tell y'all, I don't think I would do it on YouTube. You thought you was in my truck. <laughs> well, that's the cream that I got. It's um night cream. Just don't know where 
is that? I don't know what happened to it. Cause like I have these two things. I can't put these on. These are for the daytime because it's got retinol in it. This is day cream with um moisturizing day cream with sunscreen. But I also have night cream. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Here we go. This is the night cream. So the night cream, it has helps soften and renew the look of tired skin overnight. It helps restore the skin's protective barrier with three essential ceramides and niacinamides. The number one ingredient is water. Thank God, because I need it. And this stuff right here, I swear by it. And I can't find it no more. This right here was so bomb. Oh my goodness. That's why I got it still, so I can look for it online. And then I also have this when I go and wash my face during the day. Citric acid renewing cleaner. And then I also have the ordinary peeling solution. It's like this, but it's peeling solution. Um, I'm supposed to put it on my skin and on my face for 10 minutes and then wash it off. But which one? But I, um, where am I gonna be at for 10 minutes other than the shower? Well, I'm gonna be sitting waiting to wash my face off so this cream I put on my face at night pulls water from whatever close up you spray your face with water first it absorbs the water to use for moisturizing well there's also this cream that helps absorb the moisture too. Oh, the one I can't find is right here. CeraVe Night Cream. I found it. Oh, that is called... It's Elf Super Tone, a toner with brightening fruit acids. It's called Elf Super Tone. Yeah, that's what this cream has. The first ingredient is water. Like, if I put this hyaluronic acid on my face and not this cream, I can't even. I can't. Yeah, they have it at Ulta, but it's not at Ulta no more. I bought this probably like three years ago. If I put this hyaluronic acid on my face without this, my face feels weird, starts to burn, and all kind of stuff. Oh, this feels so much better. And then there's this gel, gel, oil to gel, or gel to oil cleaner that I wanted to get. I didn't have enough money to buy the rest of it. So I just got the, I got the most important stuff first. Um... My face feels so much better. Ooh. And then I use this, these three, during the day. And I use these two at night. Because you can't mix hyaluronic acid with retinol. I will mess my face up. <laughs> I feel better. Y'all look how dirty my face was. I don't even want to pull it up close to the screen. Look. That's crazy, right? This is a clean one. That's a dirty one. That's how dirty my face was. Oh, my God. Crazy. 
Alright, I feel so much better. So much better. My face don't look any better. I'm trying now I'm trying to get rid of this. Like my face looks sunken in. Cause this is my cheeks. Like my under eyes look sunken in, but right here is the cheek part. Like other people got the opposite problem. It's poofy under their eyes, but it ain't poofy under my eyes. It's sunken in under my eyes. What's poofy are my cheeks right here. Like, I don't even know how to Google that. How to get rid of poofy cheeks. I know I did a search to R, and the only place I could find it is on eBay. That means it's discontinued. So what I did was my favorite perfume that I wear, I bought that off of eBay and I bought a whole bunch of bottles of it. Um, so what I do is when I have money, I just buy a whole bunch of these. Like I bought enough perfume, my favorite perfume of all time. I bought enough of that to to keep me, I still got bottles of it. it. Everywhere I look, there's a bottle of that perfume somewhere. Or a body wash, I mean body spray. And then now I got two other ones that I like the most too. I do. I could do eBay. I found it somewhere else too. I forgot where I saw it at. This is my shower bag, but it turned into everything bag. And now I got everything in here and it's crazy like everything this thing is so full of everything it's heavy this is the um peeling solution it has aha and bha it's red i don't know why they discontinued it just like they discontinued one of my favorite body um sprays from bath and body works it was my favorite it smelled so good I'll put that up in a minute. But yeah, y'all. I just want to check in. It's coming up upon an hour. I'm trying to be like thoughtful. The, the time. I want to lay down and be a bum and watch TV and be lazy. Aww. That's so cute. I want to go home. I just saw a motorhome pass by and on the windows they got like all the Easter stickers and stuff. <sighs> I have that inside these creams. Vitamin A, C, B, D, collagens and peptides and all kind of stuff. Who's going to be closing by the end of the year? <sighs> this sucks, bro. And I got to pee again. I just peed. Like at five o'clock. Oh, I don't really shop at Bath and Body Works like that no more. I don't care about Bath and Body Works. I like Dove. Dove is now is gonna be Dove and Sarah V. Y'all, I want to go home so bad. Like, I just want to go home. And I just want another job. Like, I'm trying to give myself the best benefit of the doubt. Like, I'm trying to give myself a solid week of just studying the typing. Like, a solid week to see if I can get my typing speed up to apply for this job. Before I apply for any other job. Because, what if I apply for another job and then I apply for that job and I got to quit the job that I had? And I don't want to do that. But, I really just... The reason why I say that is because I'm feeling like, fuck it. Let me just apply to Walmart. Like, just, just to get off the truck. 
Like I'm just a truck. I can work for Amazon right now. I'm ready to go. Maybe I need to do that because I need to lose this weight too. I was trying to like lose this weight before my birthday. And when I was working for Amazon, I was that small. Boy, I lost a whole bunch of weight. Having to run in and out the truck to go to the packages and get the packages, take it to the door. What up, Laura? I was just talking about y'all. My viewers was asking me, Laura, um, do I know any neighbors? Am I cool with my neighbors? Because my lawn need to be mowed. And I got some stuff at the house that need to be fixed. And since Joe ain't there no more, they was like, you cool with your neighbors? And I was telling them how how um, your son-in-law scares the hell out of me. Because <laughs> he, he just scares me the way he looks. So I won't be asking them for nothing. And Maggie, I don't know about Maggie. But I was just talking about you. See, yeah, I told you I'm cool with my neighbors. Because Laura is the mom. She's the mom of the neighbor, of my neighbors. Thank you, Wade. Why, P, what you mean, why? Why what? Y'all look. If y'all know anybody in Houston that's not a trucking company that's hiring, send them my way please okay and if y'all can't do that i did step out on faith and that's how i got in this situation i stepped out on faith and tried to start a dispatching service and then my mortgage didn't get paid for two months and then here i am about to lose my house so i ain't stepping out on faith no more not right now let me catch up on my bills first if y'all don't know nobody that's hiring then pray for me pray that i get a job off this truck because I want to be home with my kids. I want to be home and do regular stuff. I want to go get in the gym. I want to go to the, the lake. I want to sit in my front yard and just watch people drive down the street. I want to mow my backyard. I want to go to church. I want to go mingle. I want to talk to Laura and the neighbors. I want to... Girl! Oh, your husband. Okay. Um. Okay. Well... There's two two things that's trying right now. The most pressing issues right now is my sink is leaking. The faucet. And the dishwasher don't work. It won't come on. I because it was it wasn't it wasn't draining. And I I think I fixed why it's not draining, but now it won't come on no more. That's the issue that I'm having right now. But I just want to go out the truck because I want to be a normal person. And my son is coming upon his senior year, and I need to be at home with him for his senior year. Like, he's going to be going to prom and all kind of stuff. I got to be there. I can't do that. This is the last of the Mohicans. Everybody else graduated, and I wasn't there for them when they went to prom and stuff. I can't do that no more. So I definitely got to get off the truck. I have to, because I'm not about to miss that. So, I'm watching this thing. This happened in Dallas. Y'all, I just want to go home. Man. Y'all don't even understand. But, Laura, I'll, I'll, I'll be home next weekend, so we'll talk about it. How much you going to charge? Because... What up, Bill? But, hmm. Hmm. I was just thinking about something. I can't say it out loud. The dog finally settled down. She's finally laying down. Finally, golly. She be up on watch like 24-7, I swear. She'll sit in the seat, and then she'll jump to that seat, and then she'll jump to that seat, and then she'll jump to that seat, and then she and, and she do this all day, just jumping. Seat to seat to seat to seat to seat to seat to seat. And I'm like, bro, sit down. And she just won't sit down. She used to be jumping from seat to seat all day. 
and now she's finally laying down like she ain't been on that floor all day i didn't took her out we walked i took her around the whole parking lot i let her run around and be wild and crazy and all of that she's finally laying down like i'd be so excited like i'm so excited that i actually have a whole german shepherd do you know what, what a blessing it is to have a german shepherd like i don't know if y'all understand like before i had a german shepherd i used to see everybody else's german shepherd and I didn't even know the dog. I'm like, oh my God, can I hug the dog? And then I'll hug the dog. I'm like, I love you. And people look at me crazy. I'm like, you love somebody else's dog? Yes. German Shepherds are awesome. She's so awesome. Huh, Nigel? She said, leave me alone. I am sleep. She didn't even get up when I called her name. Nigel. <laughs> I love you, pretty girl. I love you, pretty girl. I love you, pretty girl. Come here. Aww. I'm dying. Plug me up, women. Here's my pretty girl. Here's my pretty girl. Hey, pretty girl. <laughs> pretty girl. Bored, huh? I know. I'm bored too. So boring. So boring on this truck. Up oh, there she goes. Back on the seat. <laughs> Back on the seat. All right. Well, I'm gonna let y'all go. Um. What I want more than anything right now is to get off the truck. I want to get off the truck. I want to find another job. I want to go to church. I want to find a husband. And I want to go to law school. Off the truck, find a job, go to church, find a husband, go to law school. <laughs> That's my top five right now. In that order. Kinda. Nah, I got more than five. Well, you know, it's not like I could choose that. It's nothing I could do about finding a husband because I'm not supposed to find one. He's supposed to find me. And that ain't happening if I'm on the truck. Because how I'm going to be found and I'm sitting in this bunk. Just sitting here. How I'm going to be found. You know what? Yesterday, this dude asked me for my number. And you know what he had? He had five phones in his hand. And I'm like, why you got five phones, bro? He was like, I get that a lot. I said, from my point of view, that don't, that's not a good look. Five phones. I found a church home. I'm going to church next Sunday. I'm staying here till Monday. Unfortunately. Because that's what happens when you're a solo driver you know what they told me they said these are how the low priorities work the first priority go to teams the second priority go to lease purchase the third priority goes to um the third priority goes to um trainers and then solo drivers that might have been hubby right there well he ain't called me i gave him my number he ain't called he ain't hubby because he ain't he ain't about that life he ain't serious I have to be honest. I'm not about to lie. It looks bad. The first thing I think is you got multiple females, multiple phone numbers. Which phone number am I going to get? Which phone number are you going to call me from? <laughs> no. Why you don't even need to have, like, what you think you're doing? Are you flossing? You think you're trying to floss because you got five phones? You know you can get an app. That you can have multiple phone lines on one phone so you don't got to carry five phones. Like, any, no, I, he's not the one. Nope. Mm -mm. My husband going to work smart, not hard. And that's working hard. And it's stupid. Just saying. Anywho. 
I'm not going to no more trucking companies. I'm getting off the truck. I'm done with trucking. I need to get off the truck so I can go to church. Number one, I want to go to church extremely bad. I want to be back into the church community and do my church thing and be in a choir, all of that. Number one. Number two, if y'all go to the church website <coughs> that I go to, you can see me in the crowd. I was in the crowd. They took pictures of worship service last week. Transforming Faith Christian Center in Houston, Texas. Last week's sermon, you'll see me in pink dress. I want to do all of that. Like, I want to go to the singles ministry. And I want to do Bible study. And all of that. I hate these commercials. The, the, the animal commercials. I fucking hate those commercials, bro. I hate those commercials. Let me turn. Let's all and see that. <clears throat> So, I'm about to go because I got to pee. I'm about to clean my bed off and I'm about to lay down. I started watching Kingdom Business. It's a pretty good show. You know, ever since I've been, like, trying to get closer to God, I have um, been, my everything has changed, like, my taste. I haven't been really wanting to listen to, like, that ratchet rap that I listen to. I've been wanting to listen to a lot of gospel. I haven't really listened to any music. I haven't really wanted to cuss. Um, it has, it's been very easy for me to stop cussing or at least not cuss as much. Um, I haven't thought about sex as much as I used to. It's crazy. My name came up in somebody else's live. Who's live and what they talked about? What? What happened? Whose live was it? What they say? Oh God, here we go. People talking. What are they talking about? I can't stop touching my face. What up, princess? Big old. Whose live was it? Bro, I'm about to be 40. We ain't gonna even talk about 30. I'm about to be 40 and I'm single. I forgot his name, but someone suggested that he come team drive with me. Nope. Absolutely not. I ain't doing that shit no more. Made me cuss. When I really needed it, nobody was there to fuck with me. So fuck it. I almost lost my house because of teaming. I'm good. Nope. Did nobody even understand how bad I needed, I needed to, I needed this. Like I was literally about to lose my house. And the only reason why I didn't lose my house is because of R. R is the only person that I know on YouTube, in real life, at this company, in my whole entire life, my whole, everybody that I know collectively, R is the only person that made sure I didn't lose my house. The only person. Didn't nobody, couldn't nobody who was teaming with me help me? Couldn't nobody really put their foot down and be like, I got you. But R. And I'm not fucking teaming with nobody ever again. Because all I asked was, just give me a month so I get on my feet so I don't lose my house. And couldn't nobody even do that. But R. And he, and he even teamed with me. So no, I'm not teaming with nobody. I'm not putting my life, my, my livelihood in their hands just for them to up and be like, I don't want to do this no more and fuck me over again. Fuck no. Hell no. Because every time somebody say, I don't want to do this, every time somebody quit, it puts me like 10 steps back. And it fucks me hard. And that don't feel good. Nope. I can't even explain to y'all. I haven't even told y'all. Y'all haven't even, y'all don't even know. 
our nose. Y'all don't know how many times I've been called our crying. Like, hysterical. Because I'm about to just lose it all. Y'all don't know how bad it hurt me and how bad of a space I was in. Every time a teammate would get on this truck and get off the truck, y'all don't understand how it... Let me just put it like this. My mortgage is over 1800 a month, right? And I was down four months, okay? So 1800 times four. After 180 days, I think, they start, no, after 90 days, they start foreclosure proceedings. I think Ronnie told me that. So they had already started foreclosure proceedings. Every day somebody was calling my phone talking about, do I want to sell my house? Because they started foreclosure proceedings. And I asked one of the people who called me, I was like, where are y'all getting this information from? And they said, it's public record. Your mortgage company had filed paperwork to start foreclosure proceedings. And that's how we got your information. And I'm thinking like, When I moved out of that apartment, the apartment before the apartment I moved out of, I left because of COVID. And they said they wouldn't put it on my credit. But they put it on my credit. So I got it removed from my credit, but it's still a, it's still, well, I can't, I don't know. Because they said it's still a, um, what is it called? A judgment on me so meaning when I was trying to rent I couldn't rent nowhere because they said I still owe this apartment complex so the last place the last person I talked to when I was trying to rent she was like the reason why you can't rent is because you owe this money and they're not gonna rent to you you might as well look for look for a house you might as well buy a house and I was like buy a house so I, that's what I did because I couldn't rent so then now I bought a house so that means if I get foreclosed on and get evicted out of my house, I can't rent anywhere in Texas. I will have to move out of Texas to rent another apartment. That's how serious it was for me. So me being in foreclosure, getting ready to be in foreclosure, and them dangling that eviction over my head, and this man in my house not doing shit, and I'm struggling to keep up with everything because of his lack of doing what he's supposed to do. I was like, let me get back on the truck and let me team. So then if I team, I can make at least 1800 a week. I can catch up with my mortgage in like two to four weeks. In one month, I should be good. I needed four fucking weeks. And every time somebody got on the truck and got off, that was a week of pay that was gone. My check was like $200 every time somebody got on or off the truck. On or and off the truck. Meaning when they got seated on the truck, my, that check was about $200. When they got off the truck and unseated from the truck, that check was about $200. I don't know why, but that's two weeks of pay that I'm not getting that puts me behind. And that happened, what, four times? Four different people, I think, or three? So imagine how far behind that put me. And then being a solo driver, I'm not making that $1,800 a week. My checks are between $700 and $1,200 a week. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be $700 to $1,200 one week or another. Right? So, then Christmas happened and Thanksgiving happened. Even put me behind even farther. Because I'm thinking, I'm about to get back on the truck with my teammate. So... Imagine having children thinking that you're about to get evicted from your house, thinking that you're about to lose everything, you can't provide for your family, you can't find another place to live. Like if I lost my house, where am I going to live? If I lost my car, I can't even, I don't even have a car to sleep in until I find somewhere to live. Imagine going through that. And all you wanted was somebody to team with you just for four weeks. But everybody else in their motherfucking head. They got this problem. They got that problem. The solve the problem is to fucking drive to make the money. The motherfuckers trying to fuck. 
that got their head in the wrong space. I'm trying to make money. Because I'm trying to save my fucking house. I'm never fucking teaming with nobody ever again. When people was talking about like all the shit they was talking about as far as teaming. It didn't make sense to me because I wasn't on that because I'm in survival mode trying not to lose my spot. And I'm still in survival mode. I'm not through with it yet. I made a payment arrangement on my mortgage. They put all of my ba past due balance and they put it together and they said I got to pay this much. So now I got to pay over $2,000 a month for the next six months. And by July, if I don't miss a payment, I'll be caught up. That means I got to save $650 per week to put towards my mortgage only. That's not including in the car insurance, the car note, the phone bill, the power bill, the water bill, the trash bill. That's not including in that. And food that I got to eat. I spend about $20, 20 to $40 a day on food. It's not even including that. And... If I'm only getting $700 a check, now I got to rob Peter to pay Paul. Now I got to, like this check that I just had, I got $500 I can put towards my mortgage. So that means I'm short $150. Because I had to pay half of the part of my um, car note. My car note, I'm, I'm past due. I owe like $1,600 on my car note. Two months past due. I'm just rounding it up. And all I could pay them today was five hundred dollars out of that sixteen fifteen sixteen hundred only all I can pay them was five hundred today. My daughter gave me four I put a hundred and fifty so five fifty and I took that five I took that one fifty out of the six fifty that I needed to pay my mortgage. so what I got to eat with nothing really. I ate my last good meal today now I'm gonna be eating noodles all because. Motherfuckers couldn't put their shit together and say, let's team, let's do this. Man, okay, it's not your fault. Okay, fine. But don't get on the truck with me. Don't get on the truck with me thinking your ulterior motives because I need this shit. It's serious for me. But hey. Hmm. What's the amount that puts me to even? What do you mean? I was so hurt. Like, I was so hurt. Every time. And I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to be nice because a lot of my teammates watch my YouTube. So, or supposed teammates. So, I try not to say nothing to be rude. So, I ain't really told you how I really feel. <sighs> I'm just trying to keep it cordial. But I was hurt. I was stressed out. I was scared. I felt depressed. Felt like killing myself at times. Because what am I going to do? Even if I got rid of my car. Even if I sold everything. I'm still not going to get out the hole. And all I asked was somebody to just... Break bread with me. Let's make this money. People don't stand on motherfucking business. You damn right, Ronnie. I'm going to talk about it no more. This is going to make me cry. It hurt, though. Like, literally, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of that. It hurt. And if you're watching this, it's the shoe fit. Because that's how I felt. I'm I'm company, but I'm past it now. Where I stand now is I'm on a payment arrangement, and I have to save six hundred and fifty dollars a week to um, put on my mortgage. And as long as I do that, I'll be good. As far as my car note, if it if it gets repoed, then it get repoed. I got a Jeep still at the house that I got to figure out how I'm going to get it registered. <laughs> I'm in Texas. Um, 
and I tried to apply for assistance and they wanted a police report and I'm like I can't I don't have a police report he was the police they wasn't gonna believe me if I filed a police report against him so they denied the application my I don't care about the power and all of that if it gets shut off it gets shut off I don't care all I care about is keeping the house so 650 a week that's all I need and my goal was What happens? What I what my goal is is if I got a if I got a job off the truck, then I could work that nine to five, and then on my off days and after work, I could do Amazon Prime Flex or whatever, and use my own vehicle to drive and make money. That whether it be Uber or Lyft or Amazon or Walmart or DoorDash or Instacart. I even signed up for like this laundry thing where I can do people's laundry, pick up their laundry, take it to my house, do their laundry and take it back to them. Um, all kind of stuff. It's not about the registration. It's about the car needs is the check engine light is on. It's the catalytic converter that got to get fixed before I can get it registered because it won't pass inspection. And my son jumped the gun because it was at the shop. What's up, Texas Pitbull? It was in the shop, but um, he got it out the shop like before I could even talk to a mechanic. I don't want to go to another trucking company, though. I'm not trying to do all of that. But if I got to, then fuck it. I'm not trying to because, like I said, it's my son's senior year and I want to just be at home. But, um, brick wall, my Google Drive, Google number is, let me know when you got a pen. I'll give you my Google number. You could text there. Well, I think I can make, put a comment on here now. They changed it. Nope. No, I ain't try to drive over no owner out because I don't like, I'm just, I don't like taking chances like that. I've seen too many people fail. People not, people getting audited and DOT and they carrier. And I wasn't even, everything was good at, U, at US Express until recently. Everything was good until recently. So I didn't have no reason to go to another company. And now I'm not trying to go to another company. I'm just trying to get off the truck, period. Because I can control my income when I'm making income on my own. I'm, I can control my income when I am at home in my car. And when I got a vehicle and I'm at home, I can control how much money I make and when I work. I can get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and start doing Uber. And not coming home until midnight. I can control how much money I make. I can work until I make a certain amount and then I go home. I can't do that here. I can't do that on anybody's trucking company. So, nah. I ain't trying to do all of that. Y'all got me hype, man. And the reason why I keep going through this is because I, I understand that brick wall. I'm just saying, like, I just night right now ain't the time for me to. I'm I can't do it right now. I I just I don't know. I can't I can't think. About, I'm too emotional to think about that right now. I told you to get a pen, so I give you my number so you could text me the information. But I'm literally trying to get off the truck. I don't want to be at home every weekend. I want to be at home every night in my bed. I don't want to be in a diesel operated truck. I want to be in my car going to office every day. But if I have to, I will. I'll think about it and I'll wait after I sleep on it and not being so emotional right now. I ain't trying to make no emotional decisions. But 
on my 10 hour break, I could be making money. I could be making money by doing Uber or Lyft or something like that, working for myself. So I'm not saying no. I'm just saying get a pen. So I can give you my number. You send me information. I think on it. Because I was going to go to the fucking Russians. I was going gonna, gonna to go to the Russians. Art talked me out of it. I was going to go to the Russians. Making like 2800 a week. Illegal as fuck. I did not give a shit. I was going to do it anyway. Because I was that... Like, I needed it that much, that bad. I didn't care. I didn't care. I did not care. At this point, I didn't care. If I, if he even put me in jail, I didn't care. Thanks, big old. But don't you got a girlfriend? So shh. My phone is on the charger, y'all. Okay, that works. Hey. I I was doing I was thinking about the post office. Don't they ha don't they have like um sticks, manuals? You need to change your name too. That word ain't allowed on this channel. If your name is Joe. <laughs> You need to change your name, bro. That was my ex's name. I was at this little singles mixer thing, and this dude came in, and he, um, his name was Joe, and I couldn't. I was like, he was interested in me and everything, and I was like, I'm, no, there's no way, I can't do it. I might be jaded. I don't know, but mm, I can't do it. I'm over this man, like, it ain't really that serious, but I just can't date a man named Joe. It's like, it's like PTSD or something. Yeah, I saw, I saw this dude. Um, I saw this dude's paycheck working for the Russians. That's what made me want to do it. I was like, I can do that for about a, a month. After a month, I'll be out of there. Fuck it. I work for Russians illegally for a month. Just make sure I do my T's and cross my eyes and act like I ain't no shit. And just go. As long as I'm doing my job. Then I don't got to worry about, you know. But. That's still another question. It ain't that. That's not a bad idea. I forgot about that. But that's not a bad idea. We'll see what happens. I got a week. Cause I want to see if this other company gonna call me. That was your dad's name. Uh, I know, I know R, but okay. So that's why I didn't do it because R got my back. So that's still the case. Then I won't do it. Now I know it is, so I'm not. But I'm just saying. Shoot. I know I'm, I'm the queen of all money and good money. I used to live it. I used to make not good money. Y'all forgot where I came from? <laughs> At any time, I could die. I actually saw... I was <laughs> driving a, past a tr uh, truck today. His trailer said, company drivers make at least a dollar per mile and on operators make at least three dollars per mile and i wanted and he stopped at the fuel stop that i was at and i wanted to ask him like y'all still pay that how is that even possible how are you paying on operators more than the national average like how is that even happening but you know man that's so cool the fbi Y'all know I'd be crazy as fuck. Cause the FBI showed up at my door. Talk about you need to come down to the station. <laughs> we need to have a conversation with you. I'm gonna be all off <laughs> starstruck. Oh my god, yeah, let's go. Be like, what's wrong with her? Cause we going to the FBI. Let's go. <laughs> they gonna think something's wrong with me. <laughs> they gonna think something's wrong with me. <laughs> I was just looking at the TV and they had, you know, anyway. This job, 
They gonna call me. I gotta get past the lie detector test. I think the interview is next and I think the lie detector test comes with that. And if me teaching myself how to learn Excel, God, leave these trucks, man. If teaching myself, cause when I um, did the, when I applied for the position, they said, if they said, if I ask for help on any of the tests, then it's considered cheating and it's automatic disqualification. And then um, <laughs> I taught myself how to do Excel by looking at YouTube videos and stuff. I don't know if that's considered cheating, but I also Googled the position to see what other people, you know, was doing. And I heard through one person that they are, they had to take a lie detector test, polygraph. And I'm like, fuck. So if I do this lie detector test and they ask me if I cheated and I say that I looked at YouTube, teach myself how to do excel is that cheating because it's not answering that's not giving me the answers i wasn't looking up the answers i was teaching myself like of course so that's the only thing that i'm afraid of when it comes to this job will i pass will i pass the polygraph <sighs> that's all i'm worried about what show is this? This looks interesting. <laughs> I ain't watched TV in forever. There's this one show I was watching. It's called Swamp People. And they go through <clears throat> the swamps and catch alligators in Louisiana. And it's the, it's the most interesting, <laughs> interesting show ever. And this show, I don't know what this is. Polygraphs are more hyped than anything else. There's a reason they are admissible in court. They are not admissible in court. Polygraphs are not admissible in court. Um, I feel like I won't pass because I feel like maybe teach myself how to um, how to do Excel is cheating, or maybe I have a guilty conscience, so maybe I won't pass that section of the test. I'm from Louisiana too. Big O, you still got a girlfriend? I got this little teeny, eeny, weeny, eeny, weeny pimple right there. I'm dying. Plug me up, women. My face itch. I don't know what's happening. When stuff like that happen, I get the Clorox wipes and then I wipe my face with it. Then we good. That's sweet. That's nice. Congratulations, big ol'. Ooh wee. I wanna get this pimple. So where y'all gonna be at for this um, eclipse? I think I'm gonna be in Dallas. The eclipse is on the eighth. That's a Sunday, right? A Monday. A lot of people think having your spouse on the truck is a good idea. I think it's a good idea if y'all are married. You have a different mindset when you're married than you do when you're not married. It's a different level of commitment. And when you understand that, if y'all on a truck together, you can understand how to navigate that. If you know, you know. That's all I gotta say.
I think I'm gonna be picking up a load Monday, the day of the eclipse. I'm gonna tell them I can't do shit until after the eclipse. I gotta watch that. Cause the next one ain't gonna be until like 2045 or something like that. I'm gonna be like 60. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm gonna be like 61 in 2045. That's crazy. I didn't even think we don't even make it to 20 something. Like in the 90s, we'll see TV and say 2024 or something like that. And I'm like, dang, that seems so far away in the future. That's mostly women in that town back in the 80s when I was in the army. Found out because many men were locked up. Ooh. My wife went with me one time. She gained a whole new appreciation of what I do. We've been married for 13 years, so it must have worked. <laughs> Okay, at the house. The info is 832-372-3776010. That's my Google voice number. 832-377-6010. Yeah. Again, I need everybody to say thank you, R. Put that in the comments. Tell R thank you for holding it down. He's the realest man I know. Here's my, her mind is focused on me and my mind is focused on success. She is serious and motivated as I am about trucking. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Some of these people mind was focused on me. They wasn't focused on trucking. They wasn't focused on money. They was focused on me. And I was focused on money. Anywho, I want to go to Alaska. What made me? I think what made me upset was. My birthday's coming up. And chances are I'm not gonna even have the money to do anything for my birthday. This is like the first year that I couldn't do anything for my kids for Christmas. I couldn't do anything for my kids for their birthday. And that was hard. That was really hard. Demarcus, we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. I can't, cause, because what I would have to say is not going to I deliver everywhere. The only place I ain't going is Bronx, Manhattan, New York, New York, you know, the little boroughs, other than that. And DeMarcus, it's just, you know, I can't have this conversation with you because I'm trying to keep it cordial. Because if I told you how I really felt, you'll be rude. And it was not gonna be nice. So we just not gonna go there. Cause y'all know my mouth is reckless as fuck. And let's just not do it. I'm not gonna go there. And I'm go there. I have not told anybody except R. I think R is the only person that heard everything. But <laughs> I haven't 
told y'all. I haven't vented on how I really felt. R, big O. Um, Katrina. Well, me and Katrina, we talked it out. I told her how I felt. And... Ju ju it was more than four. Jonathan, Katrina, Demarcus... Big O was supposed to get on the truck. And then the last dude. I look like I'm in my 20s. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's a hell of a compliment. I will receive that. So all five of y'all. The first person, I can say all the shit because I don't give a fuck. Katrina, we already been through that and hashed that out. Demarcus, I'm not going to be disrespectful. Big O, I'm not going to be disrespectful. The last dude, he can get these hands and his mouth. Because I'm going to cuss his ass out. We already know how I felt and how he felt. And we already went through that. Don't give a fuck. You respect me, I respect you. That's why I ain't about to say shit. Because, you know, it's a respect thing. So, I must only respect Big O and Demarcus. Even though, you know, I needed y'all. I needed y'all more than y'all even knew. When y'all dropped the ball, I needed you. More than you know. But, R stepped up to the plate. He got me out of the darkness. He sacrificed a lot. He sacrificed more than anybody has. And that's why I can just let it put bygones be bygones and put it behind me. Because <sighs> he got my back. What emoji is that? Flashlight? <laughs> what does that mean? I see you, Demarcus. I I see you. Um, I see you trying. So, big O. I don't give a fuck about your girl. Cause that's the problem. What people don't even understand. Ah, the flashlight. I see you. People don't understand. Demarcus, explain to them how this shit works. We were the exception because I was really trying to get back on my schedule of driving again after being gone for two months. But in reality, how it's supposed to work is I'm driving. This is how the schedule go. I'm driving. You supposed to be sleeping in the bunk. I expect you to be asleep in the bunk because I'm going to be driving for 10 hours. I'm going to need you to get your sleep because you're going to have to drive for 10 hours. And if you're not back here asleep, then I'm not trusting you while I'm asleep back here and you driving. So I'm driving for 10 hours. After about eight hours, I pull up at a truck stop. I wake you up like, hey, we had a truck stop. You got to pee. Got like two hours left to drive. Take my 30-minute break. We might take a shower on that 30-minute break. You get back in the bunk, go to sleep. I get back in the seat and start driving. Two hours later, we pull up to the Pew Island. We switch. You go use the bathroom. I use the bathroom. You do your shit. You do your pre-trip. I come to the bunk. I close the curtains. I go to sleep. Now you're driving and I'm asleep. You're trusting me that I'm back here asleep because you need to know that I'm getting my rest because I'm going to be driving while you're asleep. Sleep is a big deal. I'm not back here lollygagging. I'm not back here on the phone. I'm not back here watching TV. I'm not up there talking to you. I am back here asleep because every 10 hours, somebody is switching. So that means that we're doing it right. The only time I see you is when you got to pee. Or we switching shifts. So, your girlfriend shouldn't have had no problem because I was not trying to be on that type of time. I was literally about to lose my house. <laughs> There's times I'll probably have to take a nap. And I'll probably park, I'm supposed to have bunks, top bunk, bottom bunk. While I'm driving, you on the bottom bunk. But if I have to pull over, take a nap, step on the top, or I'll step on the top, take a nap. The nap is like two hours for me. 
my naps are like two hours unless I literally ain't got no sleep and it's like three hours but driving teams we're on high value loads they're not even allowing us to stop for two hours we'll fucking get chewed out if we stop for two hours so that's how they wanted us to run that's how they told us to run so Every time your girlfriend would have FaceTimed you or called you, you would have seen, she would have seen that you was either in this bunk sleep or in the front driving. She would have never seen my face or heard me because we wouldn't even been like that. DeMarcus' wife was always on the phone with him and she would flip out when she saw me because she's not used to seeing me because I'm, I'm usually in the bunk or driving. There was a couple of times we were sitting, I don't even know why, I was cooking and but other than that, I mean, it wasn't even really like that. It's literally like we solo. Your passenger is in, in the bunk, sleep. But everybody who was driving, who wanted to get on the truck or who thought about it, couldn't even understand that fact. Just like, I don't know if I can, if I can keep my hands to myself. I don't know if my girl gonna be cool with it. I don't know if I can share space with somebody. I like my space. How am I in your space? This ain't your space when you driving. This my space. Because you in front. How you going to be back here and in the front at the same time? So how am I in your space? I will throw everything under the bunk. I will throw... If I, I will sacrifice. If I got to throw everything out of this truck just so you can have all the cabinets, I would do that. Because I need it that bad. I need the team that bad. I need it just that bad. I will fucking sacrifice everything. How would I make somebody else insecure? We could have been a good team, DeMarcus, for sure. But there ain't no I in team, and you did an I move and not a we move. So. And it's what it is. I just feel like I expect a man to be sacrificial. I expect a man to do what needs to be done regardless. That's what I expect a man to do. I expect him to get it done by any means necessary. I expect him to be the provider. Even if we ain't even in a relationship, you the provider. You got to get it done, period. Period, point blank. Are talking to everybody, anybody who made excuses. That's what he talking about. I haven't really talked to R about you, Big O. I talked to R about the PP boy. And I feel like that was my karma because after he got out the truck, I got a huge urinary tract infection. And I had to pee every two hours. <laughs> Um, I was willing to sacrifice with that shit too. I just asked, stop fucking stopping while I'm asleep so I can get through a fucking night of sleep so I can sleep so I can get up and drive. That's all I wanted. I don't give a fuck about him stopping. I just, yeah, I, I didn't want him to stop. Pee somewhere else. Do it another part of the way. That's all. That's all I wanted. I talked to him about Katrina. I talked to him a little bit about Demarcus. I didn't talk to him really about you. That's a good quote. What up, ghost town bullies? DeMarcus, you could have just called me, bro. Like, for real. First of all, like, it's a lot of stuff you didn't know. I, It's a lot of stuff you didn't know. Like, you didn't know that you could... You didn't have to take that load. You didn't know that. Um, 
You didn't have to take that load. And that first check that we got was going to be a short check anyway because it wasn't even a full team check. We hadn't even really ran a full team. But for real. So... I think all the little circumstances, it's the, it's the totality of shit that just popped up that made you quit, but the way you went about it is just, but I mean, I mean, it, it all, it all comes down to how you, how you perceive things or how you think, even if that didn't happen, there could have been a problem down the line with us anyway, because we think differently. You think that they didn't want us a team. You thought that they didn't want us to make money you thought that they was putting a cap on our money and they wasn't especially me if at, out of all people they wasn't gonna do that to me because i know too many people at this company i i don't know if they took care of you but when you told me what happened i made some phone calls and i had them call you to make sure you got taken care of i don't know what the you know i'm not privy to that information if they did or not but I sure didn't make the phone calls to the people I know to make sure you got that shit handled. Even if you was with the company or not. And if they took care of you, that just shows you how deep my shit go. With the people I know here. So if you had a problem, all I wish you would have did was come to me so we can get it situated. But I mean, it is what it is. Everything happens. I can't really blame you too much. I'm like, you, you, you know, you. it's about who you know and what you know. It is what it is. I'm not really upset with you about that. The biggest thing that upset me was you quit on Christmas break when I thought I was about to get back on the truck. That's the only reason why I spent Christmas money for Christmas because I thought I was about to get back on the truck a team with you and we was about to run it up and make this money. That's why I spent the money for Christmas because I thought that's the, only, that's the only thing that made me mad. That's all. I, I just wish you would have said something to me instead of let me hear it from. And where the key at? Where is the spare key at? Because you said that you left the spare key in here. You, I don't see it. I ain't seen it. I ain't found it. I needed that spare key. Where is it at? You got it? That motherfucker was cold. It was cold as shit that day I had to come pick this truck up, bro. Oh my God. It's freezing. My ex FF used to drive for years as well as back in the day, but then went driving for the post office. I got pee. I like having, I love y'all. All, all y'all. I love y'all. I can't believe he said I look like I'm in my 20s. That's crazy. I'm about to be 40 years old. If I can get rid of this stuff right here. This is what ages me. This, that ages me. If I can get rid of that. Then I wouldn't look 40. I'm in Georgia somewhere. I don't even know. I think I'm on I-75 or I-69 or I'm on my way to South Carolina. I'm four hours away from South Carolina and North Carolina border. Four hours. Yeah, four hours. That's all I know. I don't remember where I'm at because I fucked up my shit yesterday, today, because it was hot and I was at a truck stop. I was taking a 34 and it was hot and there's no APU in the red truck. And this is a team truck. I ain't got my gray truck back yet. And I was hot and I couldn't idle because I have fuel. So I went and PC'd to go get fuel. And then when I was coming back to the truck stop, I went on the wrong exit. So then I ran out of PC. Then I had to go on the drive line. I fucked up my 34. I, my direction is all fucked up. 
I don't know where I was going. I still don't know where I'm at. <laughs> so long story short, I'm somewhere along my route. And I don't know. Look at all that gold. Yukon gold is what I'm watching right now. The mining for gold. I run Midwest solo reefer now until we get our asthma endorsement. <sighs> so they straightened out your um, CDL shit. they digging through the water and stuff and all the freezing temperatures I'm about to let y'all go because I gotta pee that'd be the stuff that stopped me from doing a lie me having to pee if it wasn't for me having to pee I'd probably stay on the lie but I'm not about to pee while I'm on the live, so I'm just gonna let y'all go. And my whole day is jacked because I was supposed to go get some fuel, come back to the truck stop, blast my air conditioner, and go back to sleep. I ain't been back to sleep. And I'm about to take another 34. I was 24 hours into my 34 when I had to start my clock. And now I'm about to take a 34. So that means I would have been shut down for 34, 44, 54. 58 hours I've been sitting here. That's crazy. If you got my number, text me. Text Pitbull. He can hit me up. Sometimes I'd be like sleep. Whatever. Oh, one more thing. I was reading the book of Proverbs. And you know who I thought about while I was reading the book of Proverbs? I, I thought about Rika Cherry, bro. If you know, you know. That was crazy. That's crazy. Like, it's crazy how your mind does these things when you're reading the Bible. And the things that, I don't know how to explain it. If you know, you know. I know, um, code name, I know what I'm talking about, but that's why I said I'm changing my channel because the book of Proverbs made me do it. You know, you know, and on that, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good night. Be safe. And I'll probably go live next weekend, maybe tomorrow. I'll see how I feel. Talk to y'all later. Bye.